Does Advil or ibuprofen negatively impact patients who have the coronavirus? Stay tuned to find out. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Edgeman and I'm a fourth year pharmacy student and I enjoy making these videos about common questions patients have about medication or any healthcare related topic. So make sure to subscribe for more content. I know there's a lot of new updates about the coronavirus or COVID-19 and I'm doing my best to make videos as fast as possible. I'm juggling between working at the pharmacy and making videos, so stay tuned guys for more updated videos. Today we'll be talking about a publication by the Canadian Pharmacists Association about the effects of NSAIDs such as Advil and Naproxen on patients with the coronavirus. I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can refer to it. As a brief review, let's go over what NSAIDs are. NSAID stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are drugs such as ibuprofen, naproxen, or even aspirin. Their main job is to reduce pain and inflammation by inhibiting enzymes called COX-1 and COX-2. These enzymes are primarily responsible for inflammatory factors as well as um, pain. So if you reduce or inhibit those enzymes, you reduce the inflammation or pain. Now, how does a common over-the-counter medication such as ibuprofen affect patients with the coronavirus or COVID-19? And that's what we're we'll talking about today. And as a reminder, this publication did not go through a randomized control study. So take this information with a grain of salt. We need further studies to actually conclude or prove that these medications cause these effects for patients with the coronavirus. The concept behind this is that NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen, inhibit the enzyme COX-2. And like we talked about, COX-2 has a major role in inflammation and pain, but it also has a major role in antibody synthesis. So the theory is if you're inhibiting the antibody synthesis and which antibodies are a major part of the immune system in fighting off infection, you're inhibiting the immune system by taking ibuprofen, for example. So based off this theory, if a patient has been infected with the coronavirus or COVID-19 and they take NSAIDs such as ibuprofen, which are inhibiting antibody synthesis, it's inhibiting the patient's ability to fight off this infection. The quote-unquote controversy starts is when the article mentions how indomethacin, which is an NSAID, and naproxen have antiviral properties. And now you're probably confused, like, wait, we just talked about how NSAIDs inhibit COX-2, which inhibit antibody synthesis, which are good for the immune system, which would be bad if a patient has the coronavirus or COVID-19. And now you're saying that naproxen and indomethacin have antiviral properties. So this is where the controversy is, is that there's not enough research to say which one is happening for these patients with affected with coronavirus. And that's why I want to stress the importance of a randomized control study to be able to prove the efficacy of a medication against a placebo or a controlled group. The article does go on to mention that naproxen is recommended to treat patients with fever who have the coronavirus or COVID-19. This does not mean that ibuprofen is not recommended. They're just trying to be as cautious as possible because they even they mentioned how a randomized control study needs to be done in order to prove that these are the properties that are happening for patients who have the coronavirus who are taking NSAIDs. So their recommendation is based off a of lack of information, but it's based off caution as well. I personally want to emphasize to you guys the importance of a randomized control trial in determining if a medication is actually effective in treating a specific disease state. So let's give an example. Let's say someone unfortunately gets infected with the coronavirus and now they're sick. So let's say that person decides to take cough drops for any random reason. They're taking cough drops every day for about two weeks, three weeks. And after three weeks of taking a cough drop, they recover from the coronavirus. Is it correct to say that the cough drop is what helped treat the coronavirus? Absolutely not, because that was one specific patient that was not a large sample size or a large number of participants in the study. And also there could have been a lot of other variables to the patient's natural immune system, their ability to fight off infection, or any sort of like other uh, comorbidities they might or might not have had. So there's a lot of variables that go into deciding if a medication actually works in treating against a specific disease state. And that's what a randomized control study does. It isolates a lot of those variables and to pinpoint that like this medication had this direct effect on the disease state. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and learned something new. If you guys did, please give me a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And also, if you have any questions or feedback from me, make sure to comment in the comment section below. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.